Okay, here's some help with the problems you're going to have to turn in for your flip lesson before we do the problems in class. Um, it's chapter 5, section 2, the unit circle approach. By now, we've already gone over the unit circle. We've already completed our unit chart and our unit circle. So this should be uh, not as hard as you think. All right. We're not using a calculator. Anytime the book specifies exact values, that means no calculator. We're going to leave it in rash, uh, rational form. We are not using decimals, so no decimals. We don't want this. All right. We're given a point, and we have to find all the six trig functions. So, recall that this is your x, this is your y. If we were to draw this in our unit circle, x, and we'll draw a circle here. All right, this is our uh, 60 degrees here. So, actually it's our, um, um, y is one half, so it's our 30 degrees, sorry. So x is root 3 over 2, y is one half or we can just put it right here. Root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So basically we already have sine of theta. They call it T here. is 1 half. We have cosine is our X. So that's root 3 over 2. That's been given to you. Our R, since we're talking about the unit circle, is R equals 1. So we also need tan of t, which is y over x, which equals 1 half over root 3 over 2. Anytime you see something like this, you can just cross out the 2's, and we get 1 over root 3, which equals uh, root 3 over 3. All right? Now our cosecant of t is 1 over y, which equals 1 over 1 half, which equals 2. Our secant of t is 1 over x, which equals 2 over root 3 which is 2 root 3 over 3 and our cotan of t I'm just going to take um, this right here and flip it so that's just going to be root 3 alright now, 19, we have to find the exact value of sine of 11 pi over 2. So what we're going to do is, first of all, know where we're at. This one is bigger than 2 pi. So I can write this as, uh, this is not one way to do it. We can write this as sine of 3 pi over 2 plus 8 pi over 2. Which equals sine of 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi. Which equals sine of 3 pi over 2 plus 2 times 2 pi which just means we, we have sine of 3 pi over 2 
And from our unit chart or our circle, we know this equals negative 1. Another way to do it is keep subtracting 2 pi. So basically what we're looking for, what they're doing here is finding coterminal angles. And we just, we want our angles to be between 0 and 2 pi. Because we have all the information between 0 and 2 pi. So you can take 11 pi over 2 and subtract 2 pi. Which is the same thing, you have to have the same denominator. So 11 pi over 2 minus 8 pi over 2. which equals 3 pi over 2. So this is our coterminal angle. And then you uh, just go sign up 3 pi over 2 equals negative 1. I prefer this way. But either way, this is the more uh, formal way. 33. We have to evaluate sine of um, 45 times cosine of 45. We know that sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. We know cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So root 2 times root 2 is just 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, which equals 1 half. So you do the same thing for 39. Um, we know that sine of pi over 3, this is 60 degrees. This one is 30 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. And tan of 30 degrees is root 3 over 3. So basically, what you can do is cancel those two. Cancel this, these two. And we're going to get root 3 minus root 3 equals 0. All right. In 49, we're supposed to find all the six values of um, 2 pi over 3, which is 120 degrees. Until you get used to the radian measurement, you can convert to degree measurement. Um, you can look at your unit chart because we've already done this. Um, you need to have your unit chart memorized and just write them all down. So sine of 2 pi over 3 equals root 3 over 2. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 equals negative 1 half. Why is it negative? Because cosine is negative in quadrant, this is in quadrant two. This belongs to quadrant two. Okay, tan of two pi over three equals negative root three. Again, we've already done all the hard work on this in class. Cosecant of two pi over three equals two root three over three. Secant of 2 pi over 3 equals, um, where is secant? Um, negative 2. I'm just flipping that. So negative 2 and cotan of 2 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. Please notice in quadrant 2, the only positive values we have are sine and cosecant. For 63, again, this is our theta, but we can write our theta in degrees, which is 450 degrees. We notice that this is a quadrandal, and at this value, it's, uh, our x is 0. Or y is 1. This is coterminal with 90 degrees because all I had to do is subtract 360 and that equals 90 degrees. Same values. 
Click on your chart. We get sine 5 pi over 2 equals 1. Cosine of 5 pi over 2 equals 0. There they are right here. I'm going to do this. All right. Tan of 5 pi over 2 is undefined. Cosecant of 5 pi over 2 equals 1. Sine or secant of 5 pi over 2 is undefined because we have 1 over 0 that's undefined. And then um, cotan of 5 pi over 2 equals 0. Okay, notice, uh, here's a good pattern to notice. These two here. For the reciprocals, if it's 0 for cosine, it's going to be undefined for secant. And same thing for tan and cotan. All right, for 83, we have to find all the values. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is, <coughs> what quadrant are we in? We know that our radius, uh, we need to know our radius. If you know your Pythagorean triples, you know your radius is 5. Radius is always positive. So from here, we also know our x is negative, our y is positive. We also know we're in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, we know that sine is positive and cosecant is positive. And you just fill it out. So we need sine of theta, which is, this is your x and y. Sine of theta is going to be y over r, which is 4 fifths. Cosine of theta is going to be negative 3 over 5. Tan of theta is going to be 4 over negative 3 or negative 4 thirds. And then you just flip them for the others like we did in class. Cosecant of theta is 5 fourths. It's really messy. Uh, secant of theta is negative 5 thirds. And tan of theta equals negative three fourths. And again, like I said before, sine and cosecant are our only positive ratios. In this case, on number um, 83, this is not a Pythagorean triple. We have our x, we have our y. We do not know what R is, so we do have to use Pythagorean Theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So uh, our X, let's call that uh, A, so 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, I'm just going to say 3 squared, equals our C squared. So 4 plus 9 is 13, so C is root 13. And there's no negatives there because we're talking about our radius. And since we're going to let this equal our radius, you just fill out your um, ratios. Sine of theta equals y over r, which is negative 3 over root 13, which equals negative 3 root 13 over 13. I'll erase some of this. Cosine of theta equals x over r, which is 2 over root 13, which equals 2 root 13 over 13. Tan of theta equals y over x, which is pretty easy, which is negative 3 over 2. I will leave it to you to finish the other three. All right. Before we go on, in your math textbook, you will see this green symbol. 
This is what you need for calculus, and in our case, it will be your SL math course. So, uh, if you have a calculator at home, please do 113 and 114. It's just a calculator. The answers are 0 and 0. So, try to figure out why that is.